During the late 1800s, the city of Evansville and its surrounding community was undergoing dramatic change. With the additions of railroads and steamboats, the city was connected to all regions of the country. Evansville was becoming recognized as an industrial center of furniture factories, foundries, and flour mills. In 1873, Asa Eigelhart, James Shackelford, J.S. Buchanan, Thomas Garvin, and Charles Denby of the Evansville Bar Association informed the county commissioners that the present courthouse on 3rd and Main, constructed in 1857, was incommodious, uncomfortable, and unfit for occupancy as a courthouse. By the 1890s, Evansville was Indiana's second largest city. It had tremendous growth, particularly in the 1870s and the 1880s, and by 1890, the population was over 50,000 people. Along with that pop population growth was uh, a great deal of growth in pride in the city on the part of the citizens. Uh, they wanted to have a courthouse that not only could house the expanding government, but also that would reflect their pride and the greatness and the optimism that they had in the future. And certainly this courthouse was going to do that. It's more of a, of a state house in appearance than a courthouse. On August 4th, 1873, the courthouse site committee recommended that the county purchase the Union Block, the location of the Union Brewery and the old Wabash Erie Canal Basin. This land, bound by 4th and 5th Streets and Vine and Court, was purchased for $52,000. They then called for a full and free discussion of the subject before any irrevocable action was taken. After more than a decade of debate, plans resumed. In June of 1887, designs from eight competitors were submitted to the Vandenberg County Board of Commissioners. After careful examination, it was decided that the plan created by Henry Walters was the most suitable. His design was described as a monumental building in keeping with the dignity of the county. Walter's plan, named Fas et Spira, called for an elaborate decoration on the exterior of the structure. It is a German interpretation of what's called Beaux-Arts, which means beautiful arts in French, which was a popular style at the end of the 19th century. It is probably one of the most elegant exterior facades of any courthouse in the entire state of Indiana. These decorations included intricate sculptures and carvings which were a reflection of Vandenberg County's image and outlook. Shortly following the design proposal, a smaller lot across the street was purchased as the future site for a new sheriff's residence and jail. By late September, the contract for construction of the new courthouse was awarded to Charles Pierce and company for the amount of $379,450, which was the lowest of three competing bids. Only a decade earlier, this firm had constructed the U.S. Customs House and Post Office. By October 1887, Charles Pierce had arrived in Evansville and staked off the area in preparation for the construction. A year later, an elaborate ceremony was held by the Masonic Grand Lodge for the laying of the cornerstone. Construction continued, and within seven months, considerable progress had been made. However, the process was not always smooth. During excavation, workers discovered a large amount of hazardous waste from the canal basin. The Board of Health decided these large piles of dirt and muck had to be removed from the city because it was breeding malaria and other diseases. They started digging the foundation in the fall of 1887 and had to remove a tremendous amount of dirt in effort to get a proper foundation for this building and actually they ran into a problem. This area had been the canal basin for the Wabash and Erie Canal and that of course was no longer in existence but uh, it, it had been an area where there was water and probably people were throwing garbage and trash into it. So there had been a number of years of decaying material that they ran into that had seeped through the soil. So as they began to dig this up they ran in, in not just nice clean dirt, but a lot of muck, um, decaying organic material. And then they had to go down much farther than they, they thought, what, beyond what the original specifications were, and they actually had to build a sub-basement under the basement to get the proper foundation. Later, two workers, Adolph Rice and Lewis Heck, fell 70 feet from the south corner dome of the courthouse. Two men were working on one of the small domes of the, of the building. Uh, they were actually putting on paper in preparation for putting on the roof. Uh, they were being held in place with a scaffold held in place by a rope. The rope broke, they fell some 70 feet. Uh, Adolph Rice was killed instantly as he fell on the, 
the debris on the ground. Uh, the other man was, uh, was severely injured. But, uh, so we have at least one fatality uh, in the construction of the, of the building. Despite these setbacks, construction continued with the installation of electricity and gas furnishings. Other additions followed, including a burglar-proof safe, the courthouse bell, and a large clock for the outside of the building. With these amenities and finishing touches, the new courthouse was ready for operation. On January 30, 1891, the courthouse opened, and two days later, the Superior Court convened for the first time in its new home. The stately building, with its elaborate ornamentation and lofty dome, was a source of wonderment and pride. Throughout its operation, the Vanderburg County Courthouse played host to numerous trials and events. On the evening of July 3, 1903, Robert Lee began arguing with bartender Thomas Berry, both of whom were African American, at Ossenberg's Tavern in downtown. During the 4th of July weekend in 1903, there was racial tension in the city that uh, reached, its peak, reached its peak uh, near the, uh, the jail. Uh, on July 3rd, an African American man had shot uh, a white police officer. The police officer died uh, the next day, and mobs began to gather at the, uh, uh, the jail uh, for several nights, actually, uh, to try to get to the man accused of, uh, of, of shooting the police officer. Uh, the governor called in the state militia, uh, and on the night of July 6th, there were about 100 members of the state militia who were in front of the jail. Uh, the crowd gathered. There was some throwing of objects. A shot was fired. The uh, militia returned the fire, and uh, in a very short period of time, 12 people were dead and 30 were injured. Uh, the town eventually settled down. Now, they had actually removed the, uh, the prisoner and took him to Vincennes, although the mob probably didn't know that. In 1916, Harry Gardner, also known as the Human Fly, came to Evansville to climb the massive courthouse. In a demonstration promoted by the Evansville Courier, Gardner climbed from the ground to the flagstaff. The crowd stood awestruck and quiet for fear of making the stuntman nervous. On September 30, 1948, President Harry Truman stopped at Evansville on his second campaign trail to give a speech on the courthouse steps. Over 20,000 spectators crowded the courthouse lawn to witness Truman's speech, while thousands more lined the parade route hoping to see a glimpse of the president. Despite its great historical significance and architectural achievement, Vanderburg County nearly tore down the old courthouse after it was replaced by the more modern Civic Center in May of 1969. It certainly was uh, widely uh, expected that, it, that demolition might be in the offing simply because the county didn't need it anymore and it was an enormous building. When they got the estimates to, uh, as to how much it would cost to tear down this building, they were just aghast because with all of the stone, all of the brick, there was a huge price tag for tearing it down. The Conrad Baker Foundation preserved the brilliant structure from destruction by supporting its transition from a courthouse to a cultural and historical center. Where other buildings have been replaced and destroyed, the Vanderburg County Courthouse was spared. Even today, this magnificent structure is a symbol of the Evansville community. The Old Courthouse Foundation uh, is just putting the final touches on a master plan for the renovation of this building. Our intent is to make this building a showplace once again. As you can see all around, the building has great potential. There's architecture here on the inside that is unrivaled in Vandenberg County. It represents what the county aspired to be. Uh, this is not unusual for courthouses, really. Uh, courthouses in most uh, cities are kind of um, declaration of civic aspiration. Here's we, we, we build a, a big and impressive building because we'd like to be a big and impressive town. And that's uh, certainly what was going on in the, uh, in the 1880s uh, when, uh, when, when all this came about. Uh, the, uh, but I, I think more important, um, uh, this building has achieved a kind of national rank. Uh, Henry Russell Hitchcock, for example, is a, one of the most important architectural historians of the 20th century. Um, called our courthouse 
uh, one of the great urban piles of America. I think a really wonderful description of, uh, of what it is. And so it, it represents uh, what the county and the city hoped to become, uh, but it, uh, it represents what, uh, what, a, what a society hopes to become, and it does that in a way that has national distinction. It is done, an architectural triumph. Kingdoms may fall, dynasties change, or republics become no more. But only the upheaval of the earth or an unlooked for phenomenon of nature can obliterate that perpetual monument of Vandenberg's greatness, the new county courthouse.